Hey everyone and welcome back to Studio 3B. Rune Rock is a great operating system for running Rune. It is designed and developed simply to run by itself as a solo artist, so to speak, for hosting Rune and it's an operating system that runs on small devices that Rune actually sells to host Rune cores. So Rune Core is the center hub of your Rune media player and it needs a core to work. So Rune sells these devices and they install this operating system on it that is Linux based. It's called Rune Rock. If you wanted to download this yourself, you can, but the thing is you have to take up the whole device to use this operating system. If you have a specialized device to host the core, it might be useful to install Rune Rock, but most people revert to using Rune Core on an existing operating system where they could host other things such as Plex, perhaps a DLNA server can run on here as well. But fast forward to 2023 and now all the rage is Proxmox and for good reason. The nice thing about this is it's bare metal virtualization. It is an environment that runs VMs natively on the operating system so you take full advantage of the hardware acceleration this is a very powerful thing people have made videos about you know how to install windows and get that running how to install ventura get that running and i made a video about red hat and now uh, what i'm suggesting is capturing rune rock and putting it in a proxmox virtual environment because a couple things about running Rune server combined with a regular operating system, it seems to bloat the memory usage over time and it takes up a lot of the memory for no good reason seemingly. The CPU usage seems to be a lot more as well. Uh, nothing out of control there, but Rune Rocks seems to be tuned to host Rune. And since you may not want to take over a whole machine to install it, you could just put it right here in a VM and take up part of your machine. So. I'm going to just go through the steps here and what I did to get this installed. So basically what you do is then the links are in the description. The first you go to Google and you type in rune rock install guide and you click on that it takes you to this install guide and it tells you what to do. So you go to the download section and it says you can download the image from here. So you click that image and that downloads a img.gz file. Then you're going to go to Etcher. Etcher is a program. Download that. You're going to download Etcher. And when that's installed, you take a USB. Um, it doesn't need to be very large. It just needs to be large enough to hold Rune, which according to this is 336 megs compressed. It's about it's under 500 megs uh, expanded. So you know, a gigabyte thumb drive might be good enough. So I inserted my thumb drive. Now you're going to go and run Etcher. And you say flash from file. You select the GZ file. It will automatically expand the GV GZ for you, or you can expand it and just select the IMG file. Then once that's selected, select target, you select your USB, select one, and then you say flash. You put your password in. and that takes about one or two minutes. Okay, great, when you're done, it's gonna say flash complete. So just go ahead and close that. Now your USB drive has Rune Rock on it. So one thing you're gonna to need to get this done is a extra keyboard. When you're installing Rune Rock on your Proxmox environment, you're gonna to need to do device pass through to the Proxmox VM for this USB keyboard. It's really the only way to interact with the installer. Um, it won't work through the console. So go ahead and find yourself a second keyboard. Hopefully you have one lying around. It's kind of hard to do with just one keyboard and swapping it back and forth. So I'm gonna go get the second keyboard. Okay, once you've got your second keyboard inserted into the USB port of your server that's running Proxmox, you're also gonna take the USB drive, take it out of your computer, and put that in another USB drive in the server. So I already have my Rune Rock installation right here, but I'm gonna go ahead and create a second one. What I'm gonna do so there's no port conflicts this is my current running installation, and I'm just gonna go ahead and power this down. Okay. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and create this new virtual machine. So I'm gonna go to here and I'm gonna say, create VM and I'm gonna create it on this node, VM ID, whatever number you'd like. I'm gonna call it Rune Rock Demo. Okay, and you can click start at boot, but I would wait to do that after everything's working. Next, you're gonna to go to OS. You're gonna select do not use any media. Click next. You're gonna say machine as Q35 and BIOS is OVMF UEFI. And you're gonna add e EFI storage and that would be selected wherever you'd like that to go. And SCSI controller is fine as is. And then you're gonna click next. Discs, so now you're gonna add a disc. So what you wanna do here is trash the SCSI drive and you're gonna add a SATA drive. And I'm gonna say discard and SSD emulation. Now 32 gigabytes is too small. It doesn't install if it's that small. I, I put 50 gigabytes and that seems to be a good starting point. Depends on how big your library is. For, the storage here is not for your media files, it's just for the database. Um, I would go a little larger if you have a very large database. CPU, I would give it at least two cores. Click next. Memory, I'm gonna give it 8096 just to be, just to be lucky here. And I'm gonna click next. And network, uh, go ahead and select Intel. Um, I think there's support for Vert.io now, but I'm gonna play it safe with Intel and go ahead and click next look over the settings and click finish now before you click start on this one it's actually spinning up right now what you want to do is go to hardware and you're going to go add usb device and you're going to select the second option and you're going to choose the usb device that is your keyboard and you're going to click add and then you're also going to click add USB device and you have to pass through the USB device that is your installation for Rune Rock. Um, it doesn't seem to work with images so let's go ahead and just do the USB device and play it safe that way. Then you're going to go to the console and right before you click start make sure your keyboard's ready you're going to have to press escape right away to get into the BIOS. So click start now and then press escape on the other keyboard when you get the screen. All right, the reason why you have to go to the BIOS is because this is UEFI and it only works in UEFI seemingly. Uh, you need to go to Device Manager, Secure Boot Configuration, go to the X and then click under Attempt Secure Boot, click Spacebar and that will clear it. Uh, you do not want to use Secure Boot Mode. So go ahead and hit F10 and then click Y and then click Escape to Exit and then go down Click escape again and click reset. It won't boot with secure boot on. Then you're going to press escape again on the reboot. Go to boot manager and go to the UEFI USB drive. Press enter. You should see this. It's the installation menu. Uh, press one to install this. There's only one disk. So just press one and press Y to confirm. Great, the installation is complete. It took only a few minutes for me to run this. You're gonna eject the USB drive just by pulling it out and then go ahead and press enter on your keyboard. Cool, uh, once that's done, you really don't need the second keyboard anymore. You can do everything from the browser. So go ahead and look at this IP address 10.0.122.138. You can change the um, IP address to something you are more familiar with, simply go to hardware and then go to network device and here's your MAC address. So you take this MAC address and you can do a static IP mapping on your router. So that's what I've done on my other Rune installation. So, so go back to the console and go to 10.0.122.138. That happens to be my IP address. So 10.0.122.138. And boom, 
There's the rune installation. So one thing you'll notice is CD Ripper is not ready. I do not have a CD-ROM. That's fine. I'm not going to be ripping any CDs um, on this server. But what you do need to do is put in the missing codex, and that is FFmpeg. So you click this question mark here, and it suggests that you go to this website to get the FFmpeg. Let's just go ahead and download the release version for AMD64. Open that up. And you'll see here that it's uh, right there is the executable. So what do you do with that? You need to go to Finder and you need to go go connect to server and you need to put your SMB colon forward slash forward slash 10 dot. Just paste that IP address right there without the HTTP stuff. You want SMB colon forward slash forward slash your IP address. Connect to that, that's Samba. It's gonna give you this, hit connect. It's gonna give you this, hit guest, boom. Okay, so this is like the Samba shares for your rune server. You just need to go to codex, there's nothing in there. Copy FFmpeg. Go ahead and paste that up in there. Boom, all right, now. That's in there, but it doesn't see it yet. You gotta restart the server one more time. Let's hit reboot. This FFmpeg, what that does is it parses and knows how to transcode. Okay, there we go. Rune has successfully rebooted and the software codec are now available. So all you now have to do is go to Rune and it will try to find my old core. He's not right, so you select a different core, okay. So when you go here, I've done this a couple of times. Um, what you have to do is select the one that you want. So the one I want is hard to tell here. I think it's the third one. Then you just log in, okay? You log in with your Rune installation and boom, you're in your Rune server. And Rune Arc actually worked right out of the box for me. Assuming you have NAT PMP to let the Rune server configure the router to be seen by the public through a particular port for port forwarding. That worked right out of the box for me. If you're behind some sort of firewall that does not allow that, you're gonna have problems with Rune Arc. But let's go back in, and I'm not gonna configure my database on this server. I'm just gonna show you, uh, power this one off here. Actual Rune installation. And I'm gonna connect to that. And as you can see, if I go to settings, and then I go to Rune Arc. It automatically just configured uh, when I first installed this the port correctly. So everything's good right out of the box. There's really no firewall issues. There's nothing to mess around with and tinker. And the performance is great. Uh, I've, I haven't seen any performance hindrances with this yet. So um, and I've been running this all day. I'll let I'll get back to you in a couple of days to see if the memory starts ballooning like the other environments did when I had it running side by side with Plex and other things like that in a Linux in, in environment. But so far I've been monitoring the summary page of my Rune installation and memory hasn't gone above around four gigs as far as I noticed. So um, eight gigs should be plenty. I'll let you know uh, in future videos how this pans out. But uh, yeah, guys, leave a comment below if you uh, think this is a good route to run Rune on and uh, host your rune core leave a comment below if you use this solution and um, don't forget to hit the like button if this video is at all useful to you and informative and please subscribe to this channel for more audio and technology content